Hello dear friends, this is your personal English coach Divyam here and in this video we'll be understanding an interesting and a beautiful poem written by Arthur O. Shaughnessy. This is called Ode or this has an alternate name called We Are The Music Makers. On my screen you can see the original poem on the left side and meanings of the difficult words on its right. So let's check out something about the author first and then we'll jump into understanding each and every line so the author is Arthur O. Shaughnessy focus on the pronunciation it is Shaughnessy and his full name is Arthur William Edgar O. Shaughnessy he was born on 14th of March 1844 and he died on 30th Jan 1881 well where did he belong he belonged to a British country he was a Britisher and a herpetologist do you know what a herpetologist is you can see on my screen the definition of herpetology is a branch of zoology concerned with study of amphibians so unlike India people in uh, the Western countries they do a lot of things they experiment with their lives so not only studying herpetology but the poet also wrote poems isn't that interesting and why is this poem famous why is Arthur O. Shaughnessy remembered till today because it's only because of this poem and because of the beginning lines it says we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dreams now these lines have been considered by several musicians and they have made a couple of songs depending on these lines and that's why this poem is very famous so all of his articles were produced before he was 30 years of age and then he got married and after that he did not produce any more poetries or volumes because the last seven years he was suffering with a terrible disease so one fine day when he was returning from the theater it was raining heavily and because of that he got chills he might have got wet and after that he was shivering with cold he was down with probably pneumonia and as you know science had not advanced during those days he got chills and he was shivering and there was no medicine for his disease and he died at only 36 years of age and his last volume songs of a worker was published posthumously in 1881 all right having understood the beautiful background of the poet let's go ahead and understand the meaning of this particular poem so let's discuss about the rhyming scheme of this poem if you check these uh, lines you'll find that there are three stanzas but do you know the original poem had nine stanzas and because these three stanzas are always considered and they are more interesting than the others the remaining stanzas have been chopped out in your textbook let's talk about the rhyming scheme so the first and the third stanza are having the rhyming scheme of a b a b a b a b which means these words they rhyme makers breakers forsakers shakers let's go to the third stanza lying sighing prophesying dying and let's talk about all the b's dreams streams gleams seams going to the third stanza it is earth mirth worth birth but what about the stanza in the middle well it has a variation and uh, the second stanza has a different rhyming scheme and that is a a b b c d c d so a a which means ditties cities story glory then it is c d c d so pleasure rhymes with measure crown rhymes with down so there are variations and there are rhyming words which makes this poem very interesting let's find out few more things 
if you read the beginning of each line it either starts with a conjunction so what is a conjunction joining words are called conjunctions and on and and or either it is a conjunction or a preposition so a word which is governing or preceding noun or a pronoun is called a preposition so on off or right so what's interesting is most of the lines start with either a conjunction or a preposition and why is that so well it is to give the poem a forwarding impetus or an impact and uh, there is also alliteration so what is an alliteration alliteration is nothing but use of the same consonant at the beginning of each stressed syllable in a line of words for example around the rock the raged rascal ran so here where is the alliteration in the first stanza music makers dreams I'm sorry dreamers of dreams and this gives a musical effect now let's focus on the title the title is ode what is an ode it is a lyrical poem typically one in form of an address to a particular subject and in this poem what is the subject can you guess the subject is all the artists of the world now art doesn't just mean painting or a drawing or a sketch an artist is someone who for example makes music for example makes statues also paintings so anything that's related to art which gives a boost to the imagination of people and which makes people think which makes people feel comfortable feel good that is art and Arthur O'Shaughnessy has given a tribute to all those artists and also have told us how their life is in this world through this poem so when we say it is an ode it is an ode to the artist and that is the subject so let's start with the first two lines the author says we are the music makers and we are the dreamers of dream we is none other than all the artists of the world so the poet is calling them music makers somebody who makes music across the globe dreamers of dreams somebody who sits maybe in a deserted lonely place and thinks and dreams so these artists they think about what should be the future of the people what is good for the people what is bad for the people they sit and think so they are dreaming which means they are having some sort of vision when they are sitting in a lonely place and they are dreaming about how things should be so we are the music makers we are the dreamers of the dream now this is addressed to everybody all the artists across the globe moving forward the author says wandering by lone sea breakers and sitting by desolate streams now you must have observed and felt that whenever you are away from all the distractions away from everybody away from your friends from your parents inside a room comfortable what do you get you get some very constructive thoughts isn't it you get some mind-blowing ideas so here it says wandering which means traveling so wandering is not exactly going to a specific place but it's more of traveling by lone lonely an area where nobody is there sea breakers do you know what a sea breaker is it's a large wave with a crest on the open sea or one that breaks into foam on the shore so 
a large wave usually is seen to break the sea in two parts so it's called a sea breaker so who is wandering here it is none other than the artist the artist he would wander by the places where there are high waves where there are natural uh, scenarios and uh, a lot of nature a lot of greenery and they also sit beside the isolated streams of water and why do they do this again as it's written in the initial lines they are dreamers of dreams and they are music makers so here music doesn't just mean tunes or something it's a trend that they want people to follow or think or like so this they are sitting beside nature in order for them to get nice dreams where they can create a revolution then it says world losers and world forsakers on whom the pale moon gleams so you must have come across some of the poets or artists you can say budding poets or budding artists who try hard to make their article or painting a great success but what happens most of the time they fail so they are losers they are losers in their world world forsakers what is the meaning of to forsake it means to leave someone who needs or counts on you if somebody trusts you so much and you leave them it is called forsaking them right so people leave these artists behind thinking that they are of no value or no use so these artists they sit beside nature and keep on hustling hard keep on trying hard to make sure that their art is of value that people listen to them but the world sometimes leave them alone and the world sometimes proves that they are losers on whom the pale moon gleams now what is the meaning of this line what's the meaning of pale pale is colorless so if you're tired maybe coming back from a trek or after a long tiring journey you become pale right pale is colorless so here pale is addressed to a moon gleams means sparkles there's a moon which is sparkling but the moon is pale why is that so it just means that they might have got a little bit of recognition the moon is shining on them but not that much because they have not created much value at this point they might have had their paintings or poems or music out in the world but it isn't a huge hit it isn't a huge success so the moon is still pale on them the moon is not really shining on them which means they haven't been really heard by all the people they are trying very hard to sustain by their art yet we are the movers and shakers of the world forever it seems so on my screen you can see a couple of cities which are just famous for their art rome paris berlin hong kong new york san francisco now it has an aesthetic value which means the artists have put in their thoughts their ideas in building up the cities and people visit these cities just to have a glimpse of the art right the reason i'm showing you this page is the artists are movers and shakers which means they disrupt everything that's going on by their art and it looks as if it's only because of the artist that there is an impact in the world isn't it just try to think about uh, let's say paris let's click on this and let's say the eiffel tower right somebody might have thought about how it should look like and built a structure now people keep on visiting this place forever isn't it talk about berlin let's check out berlin a little bit in wikipedia if you just uh, check out a few images how beautiful it looks isn't it so it is only through the art of the artist that shake and move things around that creates an impact so the artist according to the poet 
they create a huge impact across the world despite of the fact that they are left alone sometimes and life is difficult with a wonderful deathless ditties we built up the world's great cities well ditties means song or poem deathless is immortal so as i said artist doesn't just mean someone who's a sculptor or someone who draws something like a sketch or someone who makes music now here the artist is said to be making songs and wonderful immortal songs and ironically this poem itself was referred by a lot of artists and they made songs out of it and again when was this poem written this was written in 1874 long back but still this poem is immortal isn't it so it is deathless it is immortal maybe if you write a poem right now while you are studying which creates an impact like on uh, India on how it should be or maybe on the way things should run according to you something and if people like it people will refer it for ages to come so according to the poet he says wonderful deathless songs are written by the artist and uh, world's great cities are built upon them on my screen you can see a list of top 20 most sung about cities in the world well new york has 161 songs upon it london 102 is there india in the list no we don't oh yes there is mumbai there are 11 songs on mumbai so you see people they write songs and because of it the uh, city is known so the great cities are not only built but known by that and out of a fabulous story we fashion an empire's glory so here who is the artist the artist is none other than a story writer now that story writer has written such stories the word uses fabulous fabulous is wonderful such wonderful stories that it has built up an empire a place's glory so a place is glorified by the story he or she has written one man with a dream at pleasure shall go forth and conquer a crown so the poet here means that if a person if an artist specifically has a dream in his mind has something that people might like and it says at pleasure so if enough opportunities are given to the artist if there is one single person who is doing everything he wants like it's pleasure with a lot of enjoyment with a lot of opportunities he would go ahead and conquer a crown which means very soon that person will go ahead and get recognition of his artwork and they will outdo themselves from the crowd here the word crown represents extraordinary achievement the next line and three with a new songs measure can trample a kingdom down so these two lines show the power of an artist the poet says that if more and more people come together like the one that is shown in the previous lines so three indicates more people it's not three artists but more people if more and more people come together with a dream and who actually want to change things and three with a new songs measure so what is new songs measure new songs measure is nothing but the same dream the similar dream that they have as a person we talked about earlier if there are more and more people they can trample a kingdom what is the meaning of trample tread on and crush so if more and more people come together with one thought which can create a revolution they can crush a kingdom down now that is the potential of being an artist so you must have uh, heard or read about a very famous proverb which says 
pen is mightier than a sword which means the artist can bring a revolutionary change in people's mind than anything else in the world and the final stanza it says uh, we in the ages lying in the buried past of the earth so who is we here it is nothing but the artists in the ages lying now what does this lying indicate lying means present so the artists if you check your history books they were present everywhere in all the ages every age had an artist now what is an artist again it might be a poet it might be somebody who is a painter a sculptor every age had that person who's really creative so it says we the artists in the ages line in the buried past of the earth so even in the past it means the same thing even in the past there were artists who created revolutions built Nineveh with our sign and Babel itself in our mirth so this is a city in Iraq which was built in 612 BC and it is buried in the past so it doesn't exist anymore again who built it the artists that's why the poet says we we in the ages lying in the buried past of the earth built Nineveh with our sign now sighing is nothing but a confused noise made by a number of voices i'm sorry um, exhale noisily is a sighing so if you're tired and if you're irritated and you do this that's nothing but sighing so the artist did sigh which probably means the torture those enslaved people received to build the building streets and all the art and then it says and Babel itself in our mirth what is Babel I have written the meaning a confused noise made by number of voices well that is pronounced as Babel but here Babel doesn't mean a confused noise it means P A B Y L O N Babylon now Babylon was a key kingdom in ancient Mesopotamia from 18th to 6th century BC so that's Babylon okay that's that's the meaning of Babel the short form it and it says mirth what is the meaning of mirth is amusement so now the lines are clear the artists who were also present in the past and they are still present they built Nineveh they built Babylon with their amusement and these were created by architects and sculptors working together absolutely very happily next line and overthrew them with prophesying what is the meaning of overthrew first of all it's to bring about downfall of and prophesying is say that things will happen so it means to predict what is prophesying it means to predict so the artists they eradicated old thoughts old rituals by their own prediction and their own structures that's the power of artists to the old of the new world's world so it means that the artists are capable of overthrowing the old world with the prophecy of a new world and the final lines the poet says for each age is a dream that is dying or one that is coming to birth very interesting lines at least for me for each age now we are in 2019 right there might be people who are trying to think about tomorrow they are dreaming right in this age as well there are poets there are sculptures uh, who are dreaming about tomorrow the way things should be and uh, there are people who have thought in the past like Mahatma Gandhi like Jawaharlal Nehruji and so many people right now they had their own dreams now people are debating those as well so the poet says 
each age is a dream that is dying dreams thought by people great artists they might be dying or one that is coming to birth so in each age there are dreams dying and there are dreams taking birth now these lines also indicate that the artists and their dreams and their predictions never die there is always an artist artists are everywhere and artists are creating impact right from the past till the present day so this is a respect to all the artists across the world and uh, this is to uplift them for the impact they create on this world and for the beautiful things they make out of their own dreams sitting isolated beside nature and uh, doing for the betterment of people so friends i hope you understood this poem if not mention in in the comment section and i will answer your comments and let me know what else you want me to explain and i will be very happy to help you i thank you for listening and watching and understanding and i hope you have a great day